This session focuses on designing frequency selective surfaces using FECO. But uh, before going into the live demonstration of the workflow, let's look into a brief introduction about the frequency selective surfaces. Frequency selective surfaces or in short FSS are two dimensional ar arrays of periodic resonant elements either printed or complementary slots that interact with electromagnetic waves within certain frequency bands. These structures, because of their inherent resonant characteristics, act as either band stop or band pass filters, meaning there will be complete reflection or total transmission of the electromagnetic wave when passing through these structures. If we look at where these structures are used, one of the common usage we encounter on a daily basis is the microwave oven. You can see a mesh-like structure on the door of every microwave oven, which is a frequency selective surface. This periodic structure basically acts as a band stop filter, preventing the leakage of the microwaves. Other common applications of FSS include their uh, usage in designing low profile antennas and uh, FSS integrated radomes as well as uh, EM absorbers. Their usage in smart homes with uh, low emissivity windows as well as military applications like uh, camouflage or counter surveillance. Coming to the workflow of designing and analyzing the frequency selective surfaces in FECO, it is done by constructing a single unit cell of the periodic structure. As we define the periodic boundary conditions, the unit cell will be treated as an infinite periodic structure in the 2D plane with respect to which we define or create the geometry. To put the workflow into steps, we first start by creating the shape of the geometry to be used in unit cell construction. Then we define the unit cell. Next, the geometry is generated from this unit cell. At this stage, we will have the option to automatically apply the periodic boundaries or manually define them at a later stage. Once the periodic boundaries are defined, we then add a plane wave excitation and then request for uh, transmission reflection coefficients and then run the simulation. And once the simulation is finished, we can then plot the transmission or reflection results uh, to look into the band pass or band stop characteristics of the FSS structure. I will be demonstrating the workflow just described using an example of a Jerusalem cross. The basic workflow does not change, but there are a few different approaches through which it can be implemented. The first is to manually create both the geometry that will be used in the unit cell as well as the periodic boundary conditions to specify the size of the unit cell. The second approach is to use the predefined shapes under the periodic structures feature in FECO to create the geometry and then manually define the periodic boundaries. And the third approach is to do everything using the options under periodic structures. The demonstration will clarify the differences uh, between these three approaches. So let's look into that. To simplify the process of demonstration, I am using a pre-cooked model with the design variables already defined. And I just have uh, two rectangles uh, defined here. So using these uh, two rectangles, we will finish the construction of the Jerusalem cross. 
so for the jerusalem cross we need uh, two arms as well as uh, four steps uh, at the end of these arms so let's uh, finish this construction so this first uh, example is demonstrating the first approach where everything is manual so we are going to create the unit cell manually so i am going to select the arm i'm going to create a second copy by rotating this by 90 degrees and for the stubs i would select uh, the predefined stub and then rotate this again by 90 degrees but this time we need three copies this is uh, a jerusalem cross to finish uh, the whole construction in feco we need to make a union of all the geometry parts that either touch or intersect with each other so i will make a union and to remove any redundant edges on the surface uh, we can select the geometry and simplify it so now you can see a single surface so this is the basic uh, geometry that goes into the unit cell now to define the unit cell under the construct tab we can define the periodic boundary conditions so if i select this one by default uh, by default uh, it says no periodic boundary we need to change it to two dimensions and then enter the start point as well as the end point of the first vector and the second vector the variable is d which is 15.2 so the size of the unit cell will be 15.2 by 15.2 millimeters uh, if i click ok so this creates uh, the unit cell in the next uh, steps uh, we need to add uh, an excitation so i'll click on plane wave create and then request for uh, transmission reflection coefficients so under the request tab request for uh, tr coefficients the frequency is already predefined 2 gigahertz to 12 gigahertz so all we need to do is uh, run this model okay. so this is all manual approach we created the geometry manually we applied uh, the periodic boundary conditions also manually okay. now let's go through the second approach so let me remove the periodic boundaries I will change this to no periodic boundaries and I will delete the geometry as well. So in the second approach, we will create the geometry by using the predefined shapes. The Jerusalem cross is under the crosses. So here I can select T cross and I just need to enter the dimensions which will be arm length divided by 2, stub length as well as arm width and create. Once the shape is created then I can generate the geometry by clicking on build geometry. Now the Jerusalem cross is created. So once the Jerusalem cross is created using the predefined shape, the next step is again applying the periodic boundaries manually. So I click on periodic boundary conditions, change it to two dimensions, enter the start point as well as the end point for the U vector and U vector. So we already have the plane wave excitation and the transmission reflection coefficients are requested from the previous step. So this is the second approach. Now let me demonstrate the third approach. So once again, I will remove the periodic boundaries. I will say no boundary and I will delete the geometry as well. So all we have is the T cross shape. So once we have the shape, what we need to do is we will use the unit cell option under the periodic structures. So click on unit cell. Under dimensions, this is where we will specify the size of the unit cell. 
So I'm going to use the variable D to specify the size of the unit cell. And for the method, this is just a metallic structure floating in free space. So I'm going to change it to metal. And for shapes, uh, the T cross shape is the only one that we created. So that's the one uh, selected by default. And we can see the complete uh, unit cell shape in the background. So if I click on create, the unit cell is created. Once the unit cell is created, then we click on build geometry. And here, instead of manually specifying the periodic boundaries, I will say set periodic boundary condition from the unit cell definition. I'll click OK. And now you can see the complete unit cell. So if you see here, you can't see the complete uh, Jerusalem cross inside the unit cell. So there are few different ways you can create a unit cell geometry. So if I expand the unit cell definition, so basically this particular unit cell is created by taking the intersection of four adjacent Jerusalem crosses. Okay. So you can either define a periodic boundary condition around a single Jerusalem cross or you can take an intersection of four adjacent crosses. Okay. But this way, you can create a periodic structure or a frequency selective surface in FECO either by completely doing it manually or by using the options under the periodic structures. Now, I demonstrated three different approaches, right? Let's compare those three. Let me open post FECO from the previously solved example. So I don't want to waste time running the model live. So the first one, this is the unit cell created manually. The second one is uh, the semi-manual approach where we used the predefined shape, but again assigned the PVC manually. And the third one is using the shape as well as the unit cell definition under the periodic structures. For all these three, if I add a graph and plot the transmission coefficient, so this is the total reflection coefficient. So here we can see uh, just above 8 gigahertz, we have total reflection. This is from the first one and the second one, so using uh, the semi-manual approach and the third one using the periodic structures approach. You can see all the three will give you the same result, so no change in the result. Uh, doesn't matter which approach you follow, you will end up with the same answer. But using the options under the periodic structures, so that will save some time and it's much more convenient to build the structures that way. Now that we looked into the frequency selective surfaces, let me also demonstrate how you can build uh, an artificial magnetic conductor or a high impedance surface that can be used as a ground plane for low profile antennas. So that is one of the applications of frequency selective surface. Okay. If you go back uh, to our unit cell, so this is the unit cell, right? So let me delete this and also delete the unit cell and I'll say no PVC. So all we have is the T cross shape. To design a high impedance surface, you need to print the frequency selective surface on a metal backed dielectric substrate. Okay. So for the metal, I'm going to create a plane the dimensions are same as the unit cell that is the second shape and for the substrate we need a dielectric so i'll go to the media library and i'll search for uh, fr4 substrate substrate fr4 and i will add it to the model Click OK. Now you can see substrate FR4 is added. Now that we have the desired shapes as well as the substrate, we can go to the periodic structures, click on unit cell, and for the unit cell dimensions, we will enter the P 
density which is D and D and here we need three layers one layer will be the ground plane at the back of the substrate the second layer will be the substrate itself and the top layer will be the FSS structure okay so I'm going to add three layers okay? so for the bottom layer I'm going to change this to metal and I'm going to select the plane and for the second layer I'm going to select a substrate and assign the FR4 substrate for the thickness typically we will go with the thickness which is same as the arm width that's the substrate thickness and for the first layer or the top layer again change it to metal and use the T cross shape if I click on create the unit cell is created and then we can generate the geometry from that unit cell so this way we can create a high impedance surface which is basically frequency selective surface printed on a metal backed dielectric substrate so if you look at the complete uh, creation you can see how it is created all the different uh, layers so basically we are taking uh, the intersection of the four adjacent uh, unit cell when you create uh, an artificial magnetic conductor or an high impedance surface what you basically look as an output is the phase of the reflection coefficient if you have a PEC ground plane then by nature the PEC ground plane reflects the incident wave with 180 degree phase shift so when you place an antenna above the ground plane you need to place it at uh, lambda by 4 height so that way uh, that wave will travel uh, 90 degrees downwards after phase reversal 180 degrees because of PEC and 90 mm. degrees upwards so the reflected wave when it comes to the height of the actual antenna above the ground plane it's in phase with the original radiation okay. but uh, to put an antenna at a lambda by 4 height uh, it will make the antenna bulky so that's why if we can use a PMC ground plane perfect magnetic conductor as a ground plane that way we can create the antenna pretty close to the ground plane but in nature PMC is not available so we realize the PMC artificially by creating high impedance surfaces now when you look at the phase of the reflection coefficient usually the bandwidth of high impedance surface is defined where the phase is between uh, plus or minus 90 degrees so let me open post figure for this particular high impedance surface so here you can see the geometry so if i plot the cartesian graph and add the transmission reflection coefficient and change it to phase so you can see the phase with uh, a frequency of 10.3 gigahertz so there is in, in phase reflection so the incident wave is reflected with a zero degree phase reversal but uh, the bandwidth it is defined between plus or minus 90 degrees so if i move the cursor this is phase 90 and the other one at uh, minus 90 so you can see here uh, the bandwidth is uh, between 9.7 gigahertz uh, to 10.5 gigahertz okay. so between these frequencies uh, we can use this high impedance surface as a ground plane to design low profile antennas so this concludes uh, the topic thank you all